Oh, 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 oh. we got one. I had a reason to be up in New England and used the opportunity to look for blue spotted salamanders legally. Stay tuned until the end of the video to see tips and tricks on how to get photos like this. Well, this is the area I'm going to look for blue spotted salamanders. It's pretty cold out, it's about 39 degrees. Yesterday it was about 73. So we'll see how we do. I'm expecting to find some. This is actually one of the vernals that will fill up for these guys in the spring. They're pretty early to get to the vernals, like sometimes February up here. I'm not sure if this is a vernal or a creek. Yeah, it looks like it might be a creek. Not moving though. Well, maybe it is just a vernal. Just a long, skinny vernal. You never know. I'm not having great luck, but I like this stuff. This this right here. That log back there. This is a little dry. Oh, 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 we got one. Blue spotted salamander. Here's a closer look at this. This is Ambistoma lateral. This is probably mixed with the Jeffersons. These are complex and you really can't tell what they are without doing some DNA on them. Look at that beautiful blue though on, on that black. Luck with natural cover, so I'm trying this road tie thing up. Two for two. Maybe I should just stick to this stuff. There's another one. That's flipped. I'm gonna stick to this roadside looking for trash. I walked all the way I walked all the way in these woods and was trying all kinds of natural cover and it just was not happening. Got some slug legs. Yeah, I don't want to rip that apart. Let's see. Some of the best stuff to flip here are two hand or so. Two, no. Too cumbersome to carry around. There it is. Okay, so I'm only about 20 feet from where I kept or where I uh, found that uh, blue spot. So I'm gonna carry this back and look for a place to set it up for some shots. It's going to be pretty basic today because it's been a few years since I've taken a good blue spotted picture. So we have some logs here with some moss on it. So as you can see, this thing's pretty big. So I just need to figure out logistically the setup here. This could work. Oh. I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, insight into how I do this. I just clean these things off. These salamanders are pretty small, so I don't want anything too big that's gonna pop up in front of them later. It's gonna kill me when I'm trying to see if these pictures worked out. So this looks like a pretty clean surface. It's got a mix of green and brown. So it's not just a salamander against a dark or a green color. So. Let's see how this turns out. These are the two I have to choose from and I have some filtered water to rinse them off with. Um, I should mention that these are endangered, at least the pure ones in New Jersey. I'm not in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. I'm not in Pennsylvania either. I went up north for these guys specifically so I could do this legally. The one guy has a little defensive tail thing going on. That's pretty cool. So here's my setup. I have this little 50 millimeter lens because I broke my macro. So we'll see what we can do. I got a trigger on top. I have a trigger here that, okay, I thought I left it on. With this big soft box to get some nice diffused light on it. 
and let's see what we can do. So I have a pretty decent starting position on these guys. Instead of using my fingers, because they can detect like your heat, I'll use little sticks to position them. So I always try to get the head up so they don't look dead. It's kind of weird, but let's see, let's start there. Before I show the outcome of my photos, here's a good example of a salamander with its head down looking defensive. I see this all the time in salamander photos and I feel it really does not show the animal in its best light. And here's an example of a salamander that hasn't been cleaned off with pure water. Now compare that with these two photos from this session. The salamander is clean, brilliant, and looks full of life. I realize that is not in line with the natural history of these mole salamanders that are usually burrowed in the ground. But as a conservation photographer, I try to show these animals in the most beautiful way possible to garner interest and get people's attention. I'll finish the video with some lively looking examples of salamanders as I recap some of my tips. Number one, clean the salamander off gently. You do not want to stress the animal out and trigger a defensive posture for ethical reasons as well as your photos. Number two, Use sticks or leaves to position both the head up and the tail in a natural curled position. Stiff tails are another pet peeve I notice in salamander photos. Number three, make sure there is no tiny vegetation in the photo around the salamander that will draw the eye away from the animal after the photo is captured. Number four, most importantly, return the salamander to the exact point of capture and do your best to seal in its current dwelling with leaves around the cover object, sealing in the moisture. And five, share your photos with the world. What good comes from all this work if your photos die on your hard drive with you someday? Now please, gently touch that like button as if it was a delicate salamander, subscribe for more fascinating nature, and comment. All of these help the YouTube algorithm and will put my videos in front of more people, hopefully shedding light on these animals, entertaining and educating. This is Bob Ferguson with Fascinature reminding you to step into the outdoors.